Hey guys, Mr. P. This video is all about food chains and food webs. So to begin the discussion, we need to identify the different parts of a food chain. A food chain consists of a one-way flow of energy from the sun to the final consumer of that particular food chain. Some food chains can be two organisms, some food chains can be four organisms, some food chains like this one can be six organisms long, but it is a one-way flow of energy. I know this picture looks like it's cycling, but the arrow ends with this final consumer, which happens to be a fungus, which is a saprotroph, it's a decomposer, but it doesn't actually go back. You'll notice there isn't an arrow in this case, and so while it looks like a cycle, it actually is a one-way flow of energy. The sun, for most food chains, at least most terrestrial, if not all terrestrial food chains, is going to be the source of energy. The producer level, like the last video discussed, is the autotroph, that is a level of this food chain that produces its own food from a non-living component, the sun, utilizing a photosynthetic pathway to produce sugars, which not only feed and nourish the plants at this level, but serves as a food source for our first consumer. In this particular food chain, our first consumer is a grasshopper. The grasshopper is going to feed on the plants of this producer producer level directly, we call the first consumer a primary consumer. The second consumer in this and all food chains is a secondary consumer. The secondary consumer is always going to be an organism that eats on the primary consumer. So in this case, the frog is eating the grasshopper. The third consumer is called the tertiary consumer. That is the third consumer. In this case, it's the snake eating the frog. And our fourth consumer is a hawk in this case. It is called the quaternary consumer. Now, the quaternary consumer is the highest feeding level of any food chain. It doesn't go beyond the quaternary consumer in terms of active feeding, right? The active predation. Well, we don't have active predators preying on our quaternary consumer, but you'll notice that in this food chain and in most food chains on terrestrial biomes, you have a form of decomposers. In this case, fungus is going to eat not only on the final consumer, but the fungus can actually eat dead and decomposing matter of any level. So one-way flow of energy from the sun through all of these consumers all the way to the final consumer, which ultimately is the fungus. Decomposers and detritivores have a vital role in the movement of energy and matter through food webs. We said in the last video, and I'll restate it this time, that energy is going to flow in one direction from the sun through our producer and consumers and will end with the final consumer of the food chain. However, decomposers have a vital role in the recycling of matter. So I will say the matter is recycled. The nutrients that is coming from the producer level as they produce them is going to be recycled back to the earth and therefore recycled by the next round of producers and ultimately through the consumers again. Energy flows, nutrient cycle. If we compare the food chain to a food web, you'll notice that now we have a lot of branching arrows, but the general outline or the general construction is the same. We still start with the sun. The sun is the source of our energy. The solar energy is coming into our producer level. The producers or the plants will produce sugars through photosynthesis, which can be consumed by a variety of herbivores, which would be our primary consumers. In this case, the grasshopper, the mouse, and the deer are all directly consuming our producer level. So the deer, mouse, and grasshopper would all three be considered a primary consumer. The snake eats the mouse and the deer, if the snake is big enough. And so the snake in this case is eating in the secondary consumer level. In this food chain on the left, the snake was eating in the third consumer level. Primary consumer, secondary consumer, tertiary consumer. In this particular situation, if the snake is eating directly from the mouse, it's eating in the second consumer level. If, however, the grasshopper is eaten by the frog, and then if we add another arrow over here, and the snake is eating the frog like it is in the left food chain, then it would at that point be eating in the tertiary consumer level. Eagle is eating, in this case, in the tertiary consumer and the quaternary consumer. If the eagle was eating the snake, which had eaten the frog, which had eaten the grasshopper, which had eaten the grass, the eagle would be eating in that final consumer or that quaternary consumer. However, if the eagle bypasses this kind of right side of the food web and eats directly on the mouse, then the eagle 
while on the left side is eating in that quaternary consumer is technically now eating in that secondary consumer level. Most animals, most consumers are not going to live in one particular trophic level. A consumer can eat in a variety of different consumer levels. And it's important to note that if you are a consumer, if you consume at the lowest level that you can live in, you actually gain more energy from that level than you do by eating farther up on that particular feeding level. Energy flows through an ecosystem in a one-way stream. That one-way stream is from sun all the way through the consumers to the final consumer, which in most cases is either a quaternary consumer or fungus, the decomposers, and nutrients recycle. It's important to distinguish between the two. Energy and nutrients are two separate things. Energy is going to flow in one way direction and the nutrients recycle. If you learned something, give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, subscribe. See ya.